how many women in sports can we boldly mention? How many can we really easily remember? And what would we do to improve the women's sports in our country, Nigeria? I know S.A. Bumi. She's a runner. On my AB footballer. S.A. Bumi, a runner. Messi. On Paris. Evelyn. Akako. That's that's a, she's a she's a basketballer. I think she think Osim ne Osim na Ike, a table tennis player. How many sports women do we get to remember their names? If I ask you, how many sports women would you easily remember without blinking? I mean, bless Nokakbari. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Nigerians, you mean? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bless Nokakbari is the first person that mm. comes to mind. And then we have Funke Oshinaike, mm. the famous table tennis player. Um, who else? Who else? You, know, you have to. Ruth, that's yeah, Ruth Soro, she's an athlete. You know, that's the so. thing. You, you get to think about mm -hmm. it before you mention. But like, exactly. like football, you mentioned like so Mikel Obi, Taribo West, Victor Moses, JJ Okocha, mm -hmm. a couple of them. But when it comes to women, you have to think hard because I, I feel like sports for women, are, they're not really celebrated as much as we get to um, celebrate the men. And I just wonder what we can what we can do uh, to get this all sorted. Well, uh, despite women making up 40% of sports in Nigeria, they only get 4% of sports media coverage. Now, to correct this, this shortage of media reportage, uh, the Ladies in Sports International has adopted the hashtag Know Her Name campaign to direct focus towards women as they continually shatter glass ceilings. Now, the Know Her Name campaign is aimed at increasing the popularity of women in sports and female athletes in Nigeria. We have Swar joining us via phone call this morning, and we'll be speaking more on women's sports. How are you doing, Swar? I'm doing very well, thank you. Doka? Yeah, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it has. Uh, I don't know if I should say a cool corona or <laughs> I don't know what the term is. Uh, no, we'll just keep saying, um, hope you're staying safe out there. Okay, hope you're staying safe out there. Mm. Now, let's talk about um, women in sports. I mean, it, it's quite difficult when you talk about women in sports. It's, it's difficult for you to mention five names at a go without blinking. But for the male side, it's quite different. What can we do to change the narrative? Um, first off, um, it's not just a Nigerian thing. Mm. Um, it's a continental thing. I would have said it's a, it's a world thing, but you would look at what happened at the Women's World Cup, for instance, and then you see that countries like France, Belgium, Netherlands, and otherwise are you know, trying to push the women's um, sports out there. Here's the reason why. Because basically, if you believe in equality of sports, then you believe in good business. For instance, last year, recorded uh, the World Cup for the women recorded a record of what? 46 million viewers mm. in the US alone. And which was like almost 200% more than what was used, what was viewed for the men's World Cup in Russia, which was just like 11%, 11.6, uh, 11.3 million for viewers. And look at what France did. If you went to France during the World Cup, you could see faces like Desire of Paranozzi all over their trans, their buses. They did a lot of publicity. So that's why in, in the stadium, you were seeing 60,000 uh, people coming to a women's World Cup game. So it tells you that the numbers are there if you push it out. Um, just before you called me on, I was watching and listening, and you were making mention of the fact that if you were calling female sports persons in Nigeria, you would probably say, as, as is that, um, sure lie, uh, yeah. what's it called, um, uh, and what's her face, um, Blessing of Kagbari. Yeah. But people forget that we have record holders like Toby Amusa. We exactly. have very fine girls from Unipo that are tearing everything on the track, like um, Udo Gabriel, and we are not pushing them out. And why aren't we? Because you see, when we're talking about Forbes bringing out the richest athletes for this year alone, we found out that 20 men passed before Naomi Osaka managed to even get some money, 81 million thereabouts, and using 1.1 million to beat Serena Williams. Mm. So, and looking at sportsmen that don't even have the same disability as Serena or you know Osaka, they were getting they were getting the views, they were getting the endorsements. Why? Because the brands direct themselves to who they see. So I like the fact that not just us 
not just us um, plebeians are talking about it. Just last week, the sports minister was talking about adopting a new campaign that um, championed equal rights for athletes, meaning that men and women will be getting at least relatively similar pay. Because you see, even the US I'm talking about, they won the World Cup, shape, yeah. and their men are still getting money than them. They are getting paid higher than them, and the men have not even managed to kiss the quarterfinal at any World Cup, and these mm -hmm. girls are already like 10 times World Cup over. So I feel like we take things from places that are making um, impressive moves out. People like France, you know, people like um, US when it comes to TV rights and viewing rights. Yeah. Because thanks to the move of the girls, you're getting more TV rights. People are coming to watch more games on field and people are getting more visibility. So if you don't see them, you won't be able to endorse them. But to see them, you need a structure. So that's why I feel like what the minister um, Sunday Diary is about to do is to be encouraged because if there's a structure in place that ensures that pay for the girls is at least relatively okay, it will be cool. Mm. Imagine that in this period of corona, we were seeing archives, throwbacks of the Super Eagles, games from 1984, before yeah. we were even born, games from 1999, 1996, 2004, yeah. and there were no throwback videos of the African women champions, like the Super Falcons. Super Falcons yeah. No games, no nothing, because visibility uh, was not there. And a lot of your games, you have, to sh you have to dig deep into the internet to get it. So if there is coverage, there will be visibility. And if there's visibility, brands will know that these girls, and they can sell my market now per second billing. Hmm. Because that's what's mm -hmm. happening now. Very now true. you see it in basketball. Now you already see it starting in other fields. But I would love to see that translate into athletics and otherwise. So I like that Solidarity has taken up this challenge. It's not going to be easy, but we have our part to play. Now let's bring it back to the Nigerian Women's Football League. Yes, there's been ups and down, uh, downs with the league uh, and, uh, about dates when it will start. And of course, visibility is also a major problem. Uh, and still talking about the equal pay now, do you think that the equal pay will justify the fact that the women, we've not been seeing much of the Women's League? And will this enable, uh, enhance the Women's League in Nigeria? Of course now, of course. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying the pay is not so bad as it was before. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have teams like Rivers United or Rivers Angels Rivers rather, Angels, yeah. you know, their players have anything between 100 to 200,000, which is a far cry from where it started before. Even Angels have the same thing. Um, you also have people like Edo Queens that I think the least player in Edo Queens is about 120,000. So I feel like that's a, a step. It's not the best, but it is something because a lot of these female athletes are breadwinners for their families. Mm. So if they don't bring any money, nothing is happening. But I feel like the pay, it justifies the sacrifice. Because a lot of parents would rather their daughters still go to school, which is good, and not do anything sports-wise. Because they feel like sports women don't get remuneration. And you won't blame them so much. I mean, if you look at athletics, the only people that have some money are those with endorsements. And the few ones that have endorsements are already in the abroad. I'm talking about our local, um, I won't say local, but our Nigerian champion, one of the youngest talents we have, like example, Joy, you look at people like um, Water Fix, the one that just moved to Edo Queens from um, Rafiat Sule, and you see that they don't even take home 250, 250. And the equivalent for them in the PSL, that's the South African Women's League that just started last year, gets at least 500,000 naira. Wow. So you need to understand that. Because if you raise the pay, you raise the profile. Mm. So who must be expected? You can't say that I'm paying you 100,000 or you come and train seven times a week. You, <laughs> you can't see your parents. You can't have boyfriends like that. You can't do this and you can't do that for 100,000. It's slave wow. work now. Mm, very true. I, I don't know why you had to mention the boyfriend parts. I, I don't know what... It's important. No, it's, it, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right, so thank you for sticking with us today. Thank you for having me over. Stay safe, man. Yeah, thank you very much. You continue to stay safe out there. I don't know. She had to put in the boyfriend part. I, I don't know. I mean, some people make it a major close, actually. Oh, yeah. Just want them to just stay focused. Mm. <laughs> keep, keep your mm. eyes on the prize, exactly. Okay.